Hello everyone, welcome to a Python programming project. I am using Python to compute a paycheck. Although the program I am using is short, it has a lot of things that can be used to demonstrate several programming topics. We will cover how to use a development system to enter and run a Python program. The program is organized into sections for input, processing, and output using sequence selection and repetition. We will see how to use comments in the program, discuss variables, and the rules for giving them names. Exception handling will be used to process unexpected inputs from the keyboard and prevent the program from failing unexpectedly. In this lab project, you will enter a Python program and execute it. In programming terms, when we say execute, we mean make it run. In this example, 41 hours were worked at $20 per hour. The first 40 hours are paid at $20 per hour. The one hour of overtime is paid at time and a half for $30. The total pay is $830. The output is displayed with two digits past the decimal. Get a copy of the program either from the course Canvas web page or my website. My website is at https colon slash slash program dash info dot net slash python slash python paycheck dot png. Be careful with the capital and small letters if you are entering the web address. The program is organized into three sections input, processing, and output. The first section is the input. You need to have something input before it can be processed. The program asks for the number of hours worked and the pay rate. The second section is the processing. We need to compute the values for the paycheck before they can be output to the display. Since we get paid at time and a half for anything over 40 hours, the program needs to determine the amount of pay for up to 40 hours and then the amount of pay at time and a half for anything over 40. Then add those two numbers together for the total gross pay. Gross means the pay before taxes and other deductions. This program is only computing gross pay, not the net pay which is after taxes and deductions. The third part of the program is output. The program outputs the regular pay, overtime pay, and total pay. It uses the print statement to display the regular pay, overtime pay, and total pay. In the early days of computers before video displays were invented, the user's console device was typically a printing, teletype, or selectric typewriter. This is why we see the word print used in many programming languages when the output actually goes to a video display. Comments are not executed when the program runs. They provide a way to help make the program more readable and understandable. It is very frustrating to work so hard on code to get it to work and then come back later and have to try again to figure out what the code is doing. Sometimes it might be you who wrote the code or it might even be someone else. Comments in Python start with the hash mark and stop when the end of line is reached. Comments should be placed at the top of each file that identify the file, author, and date, and at the top of each block of code and on any line of code that is not totally obvious of what the code is doing. When writing programs, organize the code using sequence, selection, and repetition. Sequence just means one thing after another. For example, input, process, output. Within those sections, we can also use selection or repetition. Selection means the program needs to choose one path or another. This is most commonly done by an if statement that evaluates to true or false. In this program, one path is chosen if there's no overtime and another path if there is overtime. The statement if hours less than or equal to 40, colon, is testing for no overtime. When it is true, hours are less than or equal to 40. The else colon statement is executed when there is overtime, meaning that the if statement was evaluated to false. The repetition structure can have the decision part either at the top or bottom of the loop. 
The paycheck program uses a while loop during the input of the hours and another loop during the input of the pay rate. The first while loop will try again if a non-numeric value is input for hours. The second while loop does the same thing when inputting the pay rate. Use the OnlineGDB.com web application to enter and run the paycheck program. Enter OnlineGDB.com at the web address in your browser. When the application loads, select Python 3 as the language. Enter all 40 lines of the Python program, including the blank lines. Although the blank lines are not required for the program to run correctly, it is like separating paragraphs in an English essay to make it look good. Important things when entering Python code. Capital letters and lowercase letters must be entered as shown, except for comments. Comments start with the hash mark. Indentation and spacing must be followed. Use four spaces for each indent. Variable names can't have spaces. Use the underscore instead. For example, use pay underscore rate as a variable name, not pay rate with a space. When the program has been entered, click the green Run button at the top of the screen. If there are any errors, fix them and click Run again. If there are multiple errors, you may need to do this several times. The bottom of the screen is the interactive console for inputs and outputs. You may need to resize this part of the window and make it bigger to see all of the inputs and outputs. Be patient when entering the hours and pay rate. Online GDB is on a server somewhere on the internet. It may be far away and there may be many people using the server at the same time. Get a copy of the lab report from the course Canvas web page. Click the Enable Editing button if it appears in the yellow bar across the top of the lab report. Read through the lab report before you start to fill it out. There is a section where you need to use a calculator to compute the expected results of three computations. Compute the expected values when 39 hours and $20 per hour are entered. There should be no overtime. On the next row, compute the expected values for 40 hours. There is still no overtime. On the third row, compute the expected values for 41 hours. There are 40 hours at the pay rate but one hour at pay rate times 1.5 for overtime. Run the program three times to see what the program outputs. One time with 39 hours, a second time with 40 hours, and again with 41 hours. Fill out the actual results with the values produced by the program. Verify that your computed values match the values displayed by the program. Complete the discussion section of the lab report. Get three screenshots of only the program's output, not the entire computer screen. You may need to run the program three times again to get the screenshots. Instructions are on the lab report on how to get a screenshot for a Windows PC as well as on a Mac, and paste them into the lab report. Copy and paste the actual Python code for the Paycheck program into the Program Listing section of the lab report. Do not paste a screenshot of the code. Move your cursor into the Code section of Online GDB and select All. This can be done on a PC with Control A or on a Mac with Command A. Paste the code into the lab report. This can be done on a PC with Control V or on a Mac with Command V. Save the lab report. When you are ready to submit the lab report, click the blue Start Assignment button at the top of the Canvas page. Use the Browse button to find the lab report you saved. Scroll through the rubric below to make sure you have completed everything that will be graded. Click the blue Submit Assignment button. And again, a great big welcome to the wonderful world of programming using Python. Dandolph, signing off for now.